Hello there, fellow adventurers. Today, we have an explosive build for you. One that is the true bomb for any D&D campaign. The atomically dominant J. Robert Oppenheimer. The father of the atomic bomb and the back half of the Barbenheimer double feature. J. Robert Oppenheimer. All right now, let's dive into Bobby Ops' nuclear stats. For this build, we'll be using Standard Array. Obviously, the 15 will go into Intelligence. He was a child prodigy, he knew a ton of languages, he did 3rd and 4th grade at once, he skipped half of 8th grade, and he could have gone to college early. He was also a theoretical physicist, so there's that too. The 14 will put into Wisdom. It's tied closely to Intelligence, and Oppy Boy was very interested in the mystics and religion. He also knew that he didn't know nothing at all. Most importantly, he knew the bombs were bad and lobbied to stop production of nuclear weapons as well. Too little too late though. The 13 will put into Constitution. This is where things got a little dicey. He had colitis while traveling, which stopped him from entering college early. He died of lung cancer, and he also probably had radiation poisoning. The reason it's so high though, that 15 minute sex scene. That stamina is ridiculous. We'll put the 12 in Dexterity. I don't really have a good reason for this, it just seems to fit. The 10 will put into Charisma. He admitted to attempting to kill several people and said he needed more physics, not friends. So he wasn't the most likable guy throughout his life. But apparently he was likable enough to have a 15 minute sex scene. Finally, the 8 will put into Strength. He was a physics nerd in the 40s. He probably wasn't that strong. I am completely basing this off of assumptions though, so I could be wrong. Bobby Oppenheimer, is that you? Get your country ass over here. Let's talk about race now. This one is obvious. Oppenheimer is a human. However, he's no ordinary human. We talked about his high intelligence and his history, so that makes Oppenheimer a variant human. Add a plus one in intelligence and wisdom, for obvious reasons, and you also get an extra language. You can choose anything. He was proficient in Dutch, French, English, he read Sanskrit. Just pick anything. The skill proficiency will go with religion. I mentioned it a little bit before, but he was extremely into the mystics and religion, using it to take his mind off of physics. He also gets a toolkit proficiency, which will go with a poisoner's kit. There was an anecdote that I read about him trying to poison his research professor with an apple. For the feet, we'll go with Prodigy, from Xanathar's. The skill proficiency we'll choose is Nature, since he was actively helpful in picking up the testing sites for the atomic bombs. And for your expertise, you can choose any of the intelligence skills, but for this build, we're going to go with Arcana since no one truly understands how it works. It's like the theoretical physics of D&D. Background is really the only true toss-up, even if you think it'd be easy. It was between Sage and Noble, and it all depends on when you're starting off his story. Noble is before his college schooling, since both of his parents were well off, while Sage is for after he started college, but before he was working on the Manhattan Project. For this build, we'll go with Sage. This gives him proficiency in Arcana and History, as well as two more languages of your choice. You know, I got a Sloppenheimer when I was in that movie. <laughs> what the f Shoot your eyes, everyone, because here comes the explosive first level of Wizard. No armor for Oppenheimer, because he doesn't need it. He'll let others take the blows for him. Investigation and insight are his skill proficiencies. He was a super genius, after all. His real magic, however, comes in with his spellcasting. His cantrips are Firebolt, Light, and Thunderclap starting out. It's the fire, the light, and the ringing of the bombs. And let's not forget about Arcane Recovery. He's got the chance every short rest to recover spells. Nothing better than getting spell slots back while getting the Sloppenheimer. Unseed Servant, Silent Image, and Fog Cloud highlight some of the spells at level 1. Level 2 brings in Oppenheimer's subclass. There were some good choices, but ultimately Evocation makes the most sense. It's the Nuclear Damage class and allows for the best build. This brings Sculpt Spells, allowing Oppenheimer to avoid hitting those Americans that were left in Japan during... The Incident. Magic Missile is a key pickup here. I mean, he didn't miss with the missiles he dropped on Japan. Level 3 doesn't really bring a lot except some new spells. Shatter, to represent the eardrums shattered by the noise of the bombs. And Pyrotechnics, which should be pretty self-explanatory. Level 4 is the Bomb ASI that allows Oppenheimer to explode into his full potential. It's pretty simple here, just a plus 2 bonus to intelligence. You get an extra cantrip as well, so we'll take Control Flames. Kind of like how we control the atoms that cause the bombs to work. Level 5 is the pinnacle of the Oppenheimer build. 
It may seem simple on paper, but this is its coup de gras. The spell of all spells. Fireball. The only way that his build gets more accurate is if double fireball was a spell. Level 6 brings an evocation ability, Potent Cantrip. Even those that avoided the majority of his cantrip damage still get affected. No one can escape the side effects of radiation poisoning, even those that were just on the outskirts of the blast radius. Level 7 brings some more spells, so we'll just highlight some that haven't been mentioned yet. Scorching Ray to represent the multiple bomb droppings, Fear, they even had fallout drills in school because of Oppenheimer, and Melf's Minute Meteors to represent Little Boy. Level 8 brings a nice little change of pace. Instead of an ASI, we're gonna go with, drum roll please, a feat. There are a lot of good options, but we're gonna go with Keen Mind. That allows a plus one to intelligence, and it focuses on his intelligence as well. He always knows where North is, always knows the time. Someone had to keep the Manhattan Project on track. Level 9, more spells. Between level 8 and 9, we went with Legend Lore because he knew a lot about history and ancient civilizations and Sickening Radiance to represent the lasting effects of radiation poisoning, along with some other spells. Level 10 brings another evocation ability, Empowered Evocation. This allows Oppie to add his intelligence modifier to one damage roll of one evocation wizard spell per round, and that's why the bombs were stronger. Another cantrip gets added as well, so we went with Mage Hand. I mean, there's no way he did all of this work by himself. He had to have someone to help. Now I am become death. Well, it's time to start working on the bombs. Oh? You thought levels 1 to 10 was his time on the Manhattan Project? Oh no no no. Get ready for his first level in Artificer. This particle particle J. Robert Oppenheimer is getting his hands dirty. This brings two extra cantrips and a few more spells for this build. Some highlights are Guidance to help his allies that are working on the bomb, Identify to help him figure out how to make the bomb work, and Catapult to launch the nukes as far as he wants. Level 12 is his second level in Artificer, where you get your first round of infusions from the Artificer class. This round you get four infusions. The first one was Enhanced Arcane Focus. His notes, or tome, count as his focus and allow him to get a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and ignore half cover. The next one was his Homunculus Servant. While this isn't really accurate to history, you know he had to have some little creature helping him, with his research. The other two were replicating magical items, the Mind Sharpener to help him keep focus, and the Wand of Pyrotechnics, for obvious reasons. Level 13 is another key level, his third level in Artificer, and the level he chooses as specialty. We went with Alchemist because he was making reactions work. This gives him proficiency in Alchemist supplies, as well as two new spells, Healing Word and Ray of Sickness. The signature ability, however, is Experimental Elixir allowing Oppenheimer to experiment with his supplies to make different concoctions to help or hinder. Level 14 overall is his fourth level in Artificer, and it brings another feat. This time, we're gonna go with Spell Sniper. This allows him to drop the bombs from hundreds of feet away. Certainly that's far enough away to not deal with the consequences, right? Level 15 brings another level in Artificer, and an interesting ability for Oppenheimer, Alchemical Savant. If Oppenheimer changes his focus from his notes to his alchemist supplies, which is plausible, he can add his intelligence modifier to one of the damage or healing rolls, and it depends on the damage types. He's stacking on the bonuses like he stacked the bombs on Japan. Level 16 is his last level we have of Artificer, the magnum opus of the Manhattan Project. This brings two more infusions for Oppenheimer. The first of the two is repeating shot. I mean, he did drop two bombs, so it makes sense. The other is another replicate item. This time, it's a spell refueling ring. Level 17 is when his time on the Manhattan Project comes to an end, leading Oppenheimer into an interesting life. He becomes a professor and also a communist? Maybe? He also becomes outspoken against the use of nuclear weapons. Some key spells he gets here are Flaming Sphere, Disintegrate, Produce Flame, and Circle of Death. Level 18 is the 12th level in Wizard and brings along another ASI. Add a plus one to intelligence to get it to a 20, and a plus one into wisdom, since he is beginning to realize that nuclear weapons may be a little bad. Level 19 will just cover some more spells, like Enhance Ability, Delayed Fireball Blast, and Gift of Gap. He has to be able to prove he's not a communist multiple times. I'm sure he made a mistake here or there that he corrected. Here we are, the pinnacle of the Oppenheimer build. 
the top of the mushroom cloud. The final level goes into wizard and brings with it over channel. This allows Bobby to nuke, no pun intended, any enemy or enemies with a first to fifth level spell slot automatically, maximizing his damage with any spell used. But if over channel is used more than once between long rests, he takes a toll. It's that radiation poisoning catching up to him. Oppenheimer style. Well, there you have it, adventurers. The Prodigy, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and his explosive D&D build. Let's go over some of the positives and negatives that come with this build. We'll start with the obvious. He can put out a ton of damage, both single target and AoE. With the stacks of boosts from Alchemical Savant, Enhanced Arcane Focus, and Empowered Evocation, it allows him to do more than your normal spellcaster. Plus, his potent cantrip abilities and overchannel. Even the simplest spells can become lethal. He's not all damage, however. He's got some utility with Gift of Gab, Guidance, Enhance Ability, and a ton more we haven't even covered. He's not just your nuke and hide wizard. He'll definitely help out your party from time to time. However, not every build is without faults. A lowly AC of 11, plus only 108 HP, makes him extremely squishy. And outside of his intelligence and wisdom, his skills aren't all that impressive. He's prone to con and deck saves, and he couldn't climb a cliff, even if his life depended on it. He also doesn't excel in social situations, being your typical socially awkward and reserved nerd from the 40s. Alright adventurers, time to go nuclear with this Robert Oppenheimer build. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more epic D&D content. Kick it Oppenheimer style in any campaign, and find this character sheet on our Patreon, along with our other homebrew that we've posted. And as always, we'll catch you on the flip side.